Good morning, beloved ones. Turn to someone and tell them you are simply divine. You are simply divine. You are simply divine. Yes. And as I'm looking out here, I'm just beholding and seeing the beauty and the divinity, the uniqueness and the blessedness of everyone I look at. So I'm so grateful to have this opportunity to stand out here and to, and to view that. Wonderful, simply divine. This is such a powerful time of the, of the year. For me, um, Christmas, I have a little echo. Could you, maybe, it's a little hot. So, but for me, Christmas is at the apex of the holiday season. You know, New Year's is fun. It also contains uh, the time and moments of inspiration where we're looking forward to something new. And Thanksgiving is, is wonderful because it joins family and friends together along with promoting the spiritual principle of gratitude and thanksgiving and praise. Those are great. But I think Christmas takes it all even higher because it involves more spiritual principles like peace and love and hope and, and joy, but not just for our family and our friends. At Christmas time, it speaks to the blessings that we would wish upon the entire world, right? For everybody, we, we sing joy to the what? To the world, peace on earth goodwill towards all men. So it just takes in a little bit more. It raises that vibration a little higher. And so I think it's a special time. And I think the, that, that the vibrations open up at this time because our hearts open up. You know, we're filled with gratitude. We wanna, we wanna give and share and receive gifts, give gifts and just open and receptive. Christmas is about the gift that came into the world for the world. It's the gift that came into the world for the world, right? It's that light that lights every man, woman, and child. And of course, I'm speaking of the Christ light, that Christ energy and essence, the Christ spirit. Now here's the kicker, because although this Christ light or spirit is for everyone, not everyone is aware of it. Not everyone is even, you know, cognizant that there is a light that resides within them that is the very light that lights the entire world. You know, it's sort of still the best kept secret of the ages. And I think because it is couched sometimes and covered with religious overtones, right, it's often dismissed. Oh, 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 Christmas is simply about the Christ, but it's about a individual solely, and therefore it's not related to me. That story doesn't necessarily relate to me because I'm Hindu, Jewish, Buddhist, whatever, agnostic, whatever, doesn't relate to me. But the good news is that this whole principle that I'm talking about, this, this Christ light, this light, this energy, is really for everyone because the good news is, is that it is the statement that humankind really is divine. Humankind is divine. And the truth be told, it has nothing to do with religion at all. One's divinity has nothing to do with one's religion, right? It has everything to do, that's the truth. It has everything to do with our makeup, that we simply are fully human and fully divine. Regardless of what culture you come from or uh, what religion you practice, what part of the world you live in, as a being, you are fully human and fully divine. So, you know, sometimes we think that divinity is only related to those who are in the know. You know, and, they, and each religion thinks that it's the one that's in the know. <laughs> but I love the story that Eric Butterworth 
uh, in his book, it's a powerful book called Discover the Power Within You. And Eric was my first teacher uh, at Unity in New, in New York City, but he wrote this powerful book. And he tells the story about you know, divinity. And you've all heard it before, but I, I just wanted to uh, read it again. So it says there, according to an old Hindu legend, there was a time when all men were gods, with a small g they have. But they so abused their divinity that Brahma, the chief god, decided to take it away from men and hide it where they would never find it again. Where to hide it became the big question. When the lesser gods were called in council to consider this question, they said, well, we will bury man's divinity deep in the earth. But Brahma said, no, that will not do, for man will dig deep enough down into the earth and find it. Then they said, well, we'll sink it, we'll sink his divinity into the deepest ocean. But again, Brahma said, no, not there, for man will learn to dive into the deepest waters, will search out the open ocean bed and will find it. Then the lesser God said, well, we'll take it to the top of the highest mountain and hide it there. But Brahma replied again, no, for man will eventually climb every high mountain on earth. He'll be sure someday to find it and take it up again for himself. Then the lesser gods gave up and concluded, we don't know where to hide it, for it seems there's no place on earth or in the sea that man will not eventually reach. And then Brahma said, here's what we'll do with man's divinity. We'll hide it deep down in man himself, for he will never think to look for it there. <laughs> Ever since then, the legend concludes that man has been going up and down the earth, climbing, digging, diving, exploring, searching for something that is already in himself. 2,000 years ago, a man named Jesus found it and shared its secret. But in the movement that sprang up in his name, the divinity of man has, been has still been the best kept secret of the ages. Don't you love that story? Yeah. It's still the best kept secret, right? And so how, how are we unfolding? How are we to understand what this is all about? I think this is a really perfect Christmas story. It's about, it's about a gift. It's about us wanting something and seeking something and searching something and looking for something and hope we get it, whatever it is, and yet we have it all. And so since we're working with the concepts of getting back to the basics, I thought it would be good for us to to take some time and look at this simple but yet profound and powerful truth that our divinity lies within. It lies within. So first we need to look at, well, what is this divinity all about? What, is this, what does divinity mean? And I believe that it speaks to God's, our divinity speaks to God's nature and essence that indwells us. That's basically what divinity is. It is the essence and the, the nature of God that indwells us. And not only that, it's actually a part of us. It's a part of how we express in the world, although we're not necessarily aware of that, but it is how we express in the world. Because to be connected to God or to the divine is to be connected to all the good that the nature of God is. And therefore, to be connected to the principles, the qualities of being that God is, to be connected to the things of God, faith, hope, love, all those things. And it means that we have attributes far beyond what, we are, uh, what we're using and utilizing. You know, science says that we only utilize, what, maybe 10% of the brain power? Well, I think we use maybe 1% of our spiritual power. We're just not, we're not aware of it, but it means that when we're connected to this, when this essence indwells us and is actually a part of us, that we have the ability far beyond what we have heretofore known or utilized to bring this essence and to bring the Spirit of God into expression. It means that we have the highest 
and the best aspects of life and of the spiritual realm right within us. With every breath we take, it's right here within us. And so what about this within quality? How do we, you know, access it? We talk a lot about in truth, well, the Christ within. Or we'll say, go within. You know, and, and people who are new, like, go with, where am I, where, go within, where am I going? What is it and where do I, you know, where do I, how do I get to the within part? Well, the within for me, I believe, is that it's that quiet place that dwell, that's always there. It's always present. It's what I call the real, uh, se you know, secret place of the Most High. Sometimes we think that the secret place of the Most High is somewhere out in heaven, the heavens. But the secret place of the Most High God is within you, in your whole being, in your heart, in your mind. It's in the fibers of your cell. It's in this, this place that we call the spirit in you. This holy of holies, this sacred place. This is a sacred place, but this is a sacred place. Right? This body is a sacred place. And so I believe that the within is, is all, of, all, of, all of what we can think of that would be God in us. It's placing our attention on what I call the inner space between the inner space. It's the space between. If you can get to the space between the space, you got something, right? It's the space. And I, and I say that so I want you to know it's just this place. It's not it's not hidden, but it's just a place where we have to learn to touch within our hearts. It's beyond our words. It's beyond our thoughts. It's beyond our mind's capacity. It's a, it's a feeling. It's the feeling of wholeness. It's the feeling of peace, the feeling of love, the feeling of being at one with all that is. Being at one, being one with God, one with life itself, one with all that is. See, when we are still, when we can still ourselves, that's when we can feel that presence that is God most. And God works in stillness. God works in silence. And as we become still, within our own beings, like stealing the heart, stealing the mind, stealing the question and being open and receptive, stealing the, the body, then we're able to better catch the vibration that is within us. Because all those things that I'm trying to describe really is a, it's a, it's a vibration. There's a vibration of peace. There's the vibration of love. Love is a vibration. It's not just a sentiment. You know, peace is a vibration. Joy is a vibration. And these are the wonderful qualities of God being. Peace, love, even hope is a vibration. It's, that, it's the expectancy of good. I'm hoping for, you know, you're vibrating, you're tingling, you're open. So, so if we truly can, can still ourselves enough, we can catch that vibration that is of God, that is in the silence. Just for a moment, close your eyes, just for a brief moment. And let's just touch the stillness. Oh, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Could you feel that? Do you feel the stillness? Yes. It's beyond our seeing and thinking. It's a really a, a vibration that brings us so much peace. You can open your eyes now, or you can keep them closed, it doesn't matter. But what I wanted you to recognize is that sometimes we think this place that we're trying to get to is so far off. And the, you know, the scripture says, it's nearer than your breathing and closer than your hands and feet. Just be in it. Just be still. And all of a sudden, you can feel that vibration that is God. 
But you see, just like the story that I read just a minute ago, oftentimes we're so busy running to and fro and busy seeking in the outer realm of appearances for that which we already have within. These things are wonderful. The gifts that we, they're wonderful, but they are symbolic of something deeper. And, you know, we get caught with the baubles and the bangles and the flashy, ooh, instead of going underneath. And so we run to and fro looking for it that we actually miss it. You need to just be still. Be still. But we become so identified with the mind and body part of our threefold nature. I think I, in one of my lessons before, we talked about the threefold nature that we're spirit, mind and body, or spirit, soul and body. Did I cover that? Yeah. Okay, thank you. So, <laughs> well, I don't know, you know, sometimes I'm in a flow and I'm not sure what I, this is what comes out and I'm not sure if we went over. I said, okay, I think we talked about this. Our threefold nature, we are spirit, soul and body, or as the lay people would say, spirit, mind and body. Your soul is the level of your consciousness. Conscious mind, subconscious mind, superconscious mind, your awareness. That's your soul. Makes up your soul. So we are spirit, soul, and body, or spirit, mind, and body, but we become overly identified with the body and mind aspect of selves. Right? And we begin to think that this is who we are, and so much so that we begin to ignore the spirit part. And, and then, you know, we may give the spirit part of us a little bit of our time and our attention. We may come to church and read some books and say a few prayers when, they're, when that's needed. And if we're really good and on point, we do some meditation from time to time when we can remember it or when we can spare the time. But here's the key, friends. When you begin to identify with and identify yourself as the spirit component of your nature, first and foremost, then all of a sudden your, your, your life is going to begin to, 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 to be different. Your spirit, soul, and body, spirit, mind, and body, and the first thing that you are is what? Spirit. That's the first thing. God's spirit energy is always first. And when we allow ourselves to become identified with that, and truly allow that to express uppermost in our expressions, then your mind and your body will become elevated, harmonized, and spiritualized. Because it's the spirit that will begin to be infused into your total nature. That's top dog. It, it infuses everything else. So it's the spirit. And when the spirit begins to infuse into your mind or into your consciousness, you will begin to think differently. Think differently. Right now, you think that you, can, you are controlling your thinking or your thoughts. But you control your thoughts, but you really don't. Because haven't you noticed how thoughts just pop into your head? Right? You don't, sometimes you don't even know where they came from. And sometimes some of the all kinds of thoughts pop up into your head. And if anybody else was in your head, you would be quite, right, embarrassed for them to see what kinds of thoughts are running through your head. And you're laughing because we all have this. You know, sometimes I say, ooh, if you could see it side by head. Sometimes I have to look at myself and say, where, what? Where did that come from, Silk? You know, where are you? I, I tickle myself sometimes, but sometimes I scare myself. And sometimes I go, ooh, girl, please. <laughs> Don't tell nobody you have, you're thinking like that. They think you're a saint. <laughs> if the word got out, you know, but we all are like that. We all have those, and we think, oh, I can control. No, stuff just comes into your consciousness, right? So, so what happens is un when your mind is unspiritualized, right? When your thoughts are unspiritualized, your mind will begin to pick up all kinds of thoughts from the race consciousness, 
And, you know, thoughts from even the lo a lower vibration, thoughts of a lower nation, a lower nature, a lower vibration will begin to, to, to pop in. But if you are attuned, if you can attune yourself or your mind or your consciousness to spirit, you will begin to have different kinds of thoughts pop in. See, because once spiritualized, your perceptions will change. Sometimes we think, oh, I need to change not only my perceptions or maybe change my thoughts or the way I'm thinking. So we try to maybe try to be kinder. Let me try to be nicer. Let me try to have, you know, and so we're trying and trying and trying and we're all doing that and yet it's not happening, right? When your consciousness, your mind is spiritualized, you no longer have to try. All of a sudden, your thoughts, you think differently, your thoughts rise up and they will be of a different quality and nature. They will have, you know, that, that compassion. You won't have to try to be kind, you will be kind. You don't have to try to be compassion. Compassion will arise in you. You won't have to try to be forgiving. Forgiveness will rise up in you. See, Mandela had plenty of time to spiritualize his being and his mind. So when he came out, that's the only thing that could come up was forgiveness and love and truth and the things of God. It's all about that. So, so your perceptions change. All of a sudden, you know, your understanding will become clearer. You'll understand things that you had no idea you knew. Your, your knowing will be at a deeper level. You'll be, you will know differently. You will know better. And when you know better, you do better. And when you do better, you are better. This is, and you don't have to struggle, it'll just be coming up. Then all of a sudden you'll be transformed without you trying and struggling to get it right and fix it right. And, no, 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 it will rise up from within you. But you've got to infuse the mind and spiritualize it. The same thing happens when you infuse your spirit or the spirit into the body. The body will also pick up that divine vibration and it will begin to bring itself, the physical expression of itself, into alignment. Healing will then be a natural occurrence for you. Not something you're going to have to try to do. Healing will begin to take place when the body is spiritualized. You see, this, this spirit, this, this divinity, uh, this, this God essence, this vibration, this light that lights every man, woman, and child within is what we call the Christ. Others may call it something else. They may call it Brahma. They may call it Vishnu or, or whatever. The great spirit. Doesn't matter what we call it because it is simply God at the point of our being. Is God at the point of our being? When we go, that's God at the point of our being, our life, right? It is, it's when we and the divine come into an awareness of oneness, come into our oneness. Eric Butterworth said this in the same book of Discover the Power Within You. He puts it this way. He said, the Christ in you is you at the point of God. Christ in you is you at the point of God. He says, it's your hope of glory, for it is your root in divine mind. However, you must become conscious of this root of your being. You must make the decision to act as though you are a spiritual being in potential. In other words, he's saying, you got to make the decision. He calls it here, making the decision for Christ. And we would say, making the decision for the divinity within you, for the divine, for the God essence. So what it is, is we have to make the decision to act as though we are the Christ of God. We got to make the decision to act as though we are divine in our nature, to act as though we are spiritual beings, and most importantly, to act as though God is expressing at the point of our being, right? In me, as me, through me, God expressing. He tells this story of a woman, uh, he calls her uh, an English noblewoman who was seeking God. She was very frustrated trying to find God and it says this, an English noblewoman 
was for years in mental torment as to whether there was a God. Because of her uncertainty in the matter, she could find no peace of mind. On one occasion, leaving her home and many babbling guests, she went alone into the forest, and there she cried aloud, Dear God, if there be a God, reveal thyself to me. And at once she seemed to hear a voice saying, Act as if I were, and thou shalt know that I am. It says this changed her whole life, and she found great peace. Act as if I were, and thou shalt know that I am. That's powerful, you know. Act as if I were. You don't have to figure out whether you believe or not, but if you act as if I were, I'm going to show up, and you will what? Know that I am. You will know that I am, that I am, that I am. That says powerful stuff. And I'm thinking, well, what if we were to act? Because sometimes I might give a talk and I say, well, you are the Christ of God. I want you to put on that identity. And everybody goes, yeah, 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 yeah. But you don't go home and say, you know, good to be first. Hey, how you doing? This is Christ Sylvia here. <laughs> right? Or Sylvia Christ, yeah, Jesus Christ, Sylvia Christ. You don't do that. We don't, we don't really take on that identity. We know in theory we are that, but we really haven't bought into it. And I'm thinking, okay, maybe we can't bought into it, but sometimes you got to act as if. So if you're not there and you can't believe them, how about acting as if? So what if we were to really act as if God were in charge of every situation? What if you were just to act as if? Or what if you were to act as if you know, you were divine. You don't have to believe that you are. Just act like you were You're divine, right? What if you could just uh, act as if you did indeed possess the Christ spirit or the Christ mind or the Christ heart or the Christ love or the Christ power? What if you would just act as if you were the Christ in expression? You know what would happen, I think? I think we would all of a sudden be loving, forgiving, expressing healing energy, totally in tune with the divine that is within us, with the God presence within us and all around us. We would be totally in tune with ourselves as truly being divine. Christ in expression, in action. This is what we're trying to achieve. So even if you can't feel, if maybe it feels too blasphemous, blasphemous for you to say that you are the Christ. All I ask, can you just act like it? Uh, you know, just, uh, just put that on for a moment. So this Christmas, why not give yourself the most perfect gift? Give yourself the gift of your own divinity. Unwrap the Christ in you which is your hope of glory. Unwrap that and then begin to share it with everyone you see. Act as though you were and you shall find that you are. Christ in you as you is your hope of glory. And you are simply divine. Namaste and blessings. <laughs> Namaste. Blessings. Namaste. Namaste. Blessings. Thank you. Blessings. Blessings. Thank you. Blessings.